The top two questions I get are what camera are you using and what do you use to edit while you're out on the trail? So I thought I would address that today and also answer any questions if you were wondering. Should I vlog my through hike? There's a lot of good things about vlogging your through hike or trip or anything, but there's also a few things that suck. So first let's go over the good and the bad. One of my favorite part about making these videos is whenever I meet up with one of you guys and they watch the videos and they want to come out and meet up with me on the trail or just in normal life. I love it when I'm out on a hike and some random person walks up and they say that they've seen my videos. It makes it pretty fun. Making videos has definitely built up a group of friends that I probably wouldn't have had any other way. But some of the things that suck about it is I don't know if most people realize how much time it takes away from your hike while you're making videos. Not necessarily like the filming part, but editing each video on the trail can take like up to two hours, sometimes more, and then you have to find a spot to upload it, which a lot of the places along the trail, the Wi-Fi is horrible, so it can take another two hours to upload. Also, camera gear might make your backpack heavier than not carrying camera gear, of course. I would definitely recommend not to carry any padded cases or anything like that. The more stuff you have to go through to pull out your camera, the less you're going to film and the less you're going to take pictures. Having just a little bag, I carried one on my shoulder. If you have your hip belt, just put it where you can grab it. Use a Ziploc to protect it from the rain. I was always worried about leaving my pack anywhere, so I always had it with me just because you spend a grand on camera gear. You don't want to leave your pack just laying around somewhere. Which brings me to another point. Um, having the money to replace the camera gear that you have is awesome. If you can manage it, save up enough to buy two of the cameras. That way you're not so worried about it getting stolen or you're not so worried about filming if it's raining or snowing where it could damage your camera. It's easier to pull it out and capture the moment if you know you can replace it. But I still suggest carrying the best, which is usually also the heaviest camera that you can afford and are willing to carry. That way when you look back on it, you'll have awesome videos and pictures. I filmed the PCT in a low quality and carried a GoPro on the AT. I don't recommend that. <laughs> so let's get into the camera gear that I'd suggest, the stuff that I carried, and then the next video we'll get into the apps that I used and how to use them. Let's start off with the obvious, you're gonna need a camera. I picked the Sony RX100 Mark IV because the video quality is pretty good, the pictures are alright, and it's small enough that I don't really notice the extra weight. Something that's mandatory are these little fuzzies. They cut down on a lot of that terrible wind noise that makes your footage unusable. They're not perfect, but they get the job done. Some of the things that I love about this camera, the flip up screen is key. It also has a pretty decent zoom, nice and slow. I also carried a small tripod for this, but I hardly ever used it. There's enough rocks out there to prop your camera on. This camera's high quality codec is AVC HD, which is great, but it's also a bummer because most of the mobile devices won't recognize that. To fix that, you gotta film an MP4, which is a huge reduction to quality. That's what I did for the PCT and it worked, but it could definitely be better. This camera also offers some pretty neat slow motion settings, but if you're filming an MP4, you can't use the slow motion, and if you film in slow motion, you can't access it from your phone. 960 frames per second looks pretty bad and it's almost unusable, but the 480 frames per second setting looks pretty neat. You're also able to send over photos and video through the Wi-Fi feature. That's nice if you want to like post a quick photo, but it reduces the quality too much, so I always use the SD card reader for video. There's also image stabilization, which is a huge plus when you film handheld. There are three different levels of stabilization. I kept it on active because the higher you go, the more the image is cropped and the more quality you lose. The autofocus is definitely up there on one of the best features of this camera. I can point this pretty much anywhere and it snaps into focus, which is important when you film at f2.8, which I do almost all the time, even for landscapes. Overall, I think this is a killer camera, but if you want a few other suggestions on some other cameras that I think are cool, I'll leave a few down in the video description. So in order to film on this thing, you're going to need some SD cards. I carried one 32GB card and two 64GB cards. I ended up using over 300GB in summer of 2016 between the road trip and vlogs and photos and everything. So you can never have enough storage, but with Amazon Prime, you can always just order more on trail. You'll also need batteries. One thing that I really like about these smaller mirrorless cameras is you have the ability to charge up with a battery bank or by USB so you don't have to carry one of the huge chargers around. I started off the trail with four off-brand batteries and one Sony battery, but I'd probably recommend just carry two and maybe a battery bank. 
Oh, and a quick tip, if you have more than one battery, just throw a rubber band on the ones that are charged and take it off when they're dead. That way you don't have to try to remember which ones still have juice. You have two options for editing your videos. You can either edit on trail or on your computer at home. I always edit on trail, so I'll focus on that. You're gonna need something to edit on, either a tablet or a phone. I use the iPad mini 4, but this works on smartphones as well. I went with a tablet because there was a few things that weren't possible on a phone up until recently. In order to get my video from the SD card to the iPad, I used an Apple card reader. Once it's plugged in, the photos and video just show up in the camera roll. They also make one for Android, which I'll link down below. You'll also need a pair of headphones, it really sucks to edit without them. Something that isn't necessary but can be really helpful is an external battery bank. This one's made by Anchor and it's pretty great. That's about it, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see how to edit, upload, and publish your videos while you're on the trail, check out this video.